As, uh, as Ralph introduced earlier, uh, I'm Tommy Massey with Nucor Steel. Um, and, you know, we're seeing common themes along, along these lines around asset management and blending the business with the technical and the systems. And for all of us in business and in the technical fields of asset management, uh, you know, that's really the, that is the juncture of the holy grail that we look for. Where is that balance of all those things and how do we, how do we move our performance forward in the midst of all that? Just right quick, uh, a little overview of Nucor Steel if you're not familiar. Nucor is the, is the largest by breadth of products, steel and steel products producer in the United States. Um, We've been a growing company, uh, started out as a very small company, and as Ralph talked about, kind of a claim to fame was uh, really commercializing the mini mill steel making process. Uh, and that's really bode well for us over the last 40 years. Uh, things are changing, there are new challenges, uh, that isn't necessarily the biggest competitive advantage anymore, uh, but we continue to be successful. Uh, some interesting uh, things, we consider ourselves one of the, if not the largest, one of the largest recyclers, and we're very proud of that. Over 22 million tons a year on average of recycled scrap metal, and just, it's part of the process. Uh, 22,000 plus team members, and 50 plus divisions uh, counting upstream, downstream businesses, and that is mostly in North America and in Canada. So just to talk a little bit about today, not as much uh, on the software side, but more from this business leadership and the, the integration of process, people, and systems. Um, you know, it's one thing that we've learned over the years is that taking, taking any of those in isolation and trying to go work on them, you can get some results, but you, it seems like you're never happy with the overall result. And that's because some, these things don't work in isolation in the real world. So I'm going to share with you an initiative that we had last year uh, that obviously it was to improve our performance, uh, both operationally, uh, in our business, and also to try to hit at that age-old struggle that we have of getting operations and maintenance to work closer together. And what we had is, as we looked uh, at the beginning of, of 2013, so mid to late 2012, as we were comparing ourselves to the other Nucor bar mills, uh, we noticed that through the recession we had tailed off on our yield uh, from our plant. And we had, we had some real opportunity in that. And yield in the steel mill, that's, it's lots of money as we're going to see. Just a small change in percentage is, is a big financial impact. So as we looked at that, uh, we set some goals, I'm going to show you from a strategy at the division, some goals to improve the yield across the plant. And what I'm going to go through today is the section of the plant back in our melt shop where we melt the scrap metal, turn that into a semi-finished product to roll into roll mills, uh, and the success that those guys had. The other thing on yield we realized is that, and again, these things go hand in hand, uh, the unscheduled downtime that are due to related operational and equipment malfunctions was a huge contributor to yield, and, and we knew that. We also looked at, within Nucor, uh, the fact that the way we measured yield was really a financial measurement. And there are some inherent inaccuracies in doing that from a financial standpoint. So at the end of the month, to, rec to reconcile the, uh, the scrap numbers, we would zero piles or things like that, and we'd get an adjustment. Well, that makes it a little difficult for the maintenance and operational uh, folks to use that as a process control measurement. So one of the things that we were challenged with with our division was while we were going out and improving our performance on yield and uptime was to basically define a sustainable way to go through and measure actual process yield in our process. And the intention is, is that once we kind of get that figured out and that process laid is that we'll share that throughout Nucor. Uh, like I stated, we knew that equipment downtime was a major contributor. Uh, we've had a CMMS IFS implemented in Jewett at the division I'm at for, uh, well, since 2005. And so we, we had basic, we had good data. We had eight years of good data about where's our cost, where's our equipment uh, malfunctions, uh, where are the opportunities at. And so we use those as a part of the yield improvement process. Looking at all this, though, we knew this was going to require change. It's going to require some investment in new equipment and capabilities that we didn't have to measure the actual yield. 
uh, maybe in equipment to get the process improvement. Uh, and, and also, we're seeing a, a turnover, a generational turnover, and we have a very, beginning to be a very young and inexperienced team. And throughout this, we kept that in mind because we knew that was going to bring certain changes or aspects to this that we would have to address. So going back up to high level, so we, we, the challenge was is how do we improve our, our yield performance? And along the way, we want to build a sustainable process that can be passed on to other mills and they can take the benefit of that. And when we start talking about that business leadership of tying the people, the process, and the systems together, uh, you know, there's all, all kinds of different ways you can approach that. I know we've approached them probably from just about every way you can with measured success here and measured success there, maybe not always the success that we wanted. Um, but what we begin to see is that our real opportunity to engage the people was to engage them directly by challenging them in the process improvement uh, and aligning both maintenance operations and actually financial sales, the whole team, around what the mission was. So you guys are seeing just a snapshot of what we put out in front of ourselves and our team uh, in 2000, the beginning of 2013. And you guys can see it's the, uh, the high level target there is, is absolutely a business target. Uh, we were around 689 million the year before and we started putting together this three year strategy of getting to a billion dollars in revenue at our division by 2015. As we started looking at strategically what was gonna happen, have to happen there, you guys can see what we came out in safety, operational, commercial, and in talent. And those were the four strategic imperatives that we identified that we would have to make progress to realize that, that goal. And the one in operational was, and there were several that were on the table, we thought about just doing uptime, reliability, put that at the pinnacle, and let's just focus on that. Uh, we talked about yield. We talked about several other, several other aspects. But at the end of the day, we came back and we picked yield because with a pinnacle of yield, it was, it was really all encompassing around process control, which included the management of our assets, the reliability of our assets, uh, better operational knowledge and skill, better maintenance professionals op, uh, skill and knowledge. So we chose that one for a very deliberate reason. Uh, and the other one is, is it, it drives a big business impact as we're gonna see. So the team, this is what we gave to the team as the focus. Not necessarily on, hey, the operation is maintenance folks, y'all need to learn how to work better together. That wasn't a focus. We've tried that before, it didn't work very well. Uh, but putting this goal in front of them and saying, hey guys, look, we gotta go achieve this, let's figure out how we do it. The next thing is, is uh, as we went through this process improvement, and really just in, in looking at our business or process improvement, either one, if you think about it, you know, there's usually in very successful companies or initiatives, there's a clear vision, there's a good strategy, and sometimes that's where it stops, right? And we wonder why we get measured results. Well, we realize that and lessons learned. You know, there's some other critical steps in that, and that is execution of that vision and strategy and measurement and improvement along the way. We realized that that was an area that we had opportunity in, so we actually, this is one of the places, as we engaged our team and got the operators and the maintenance folks on the floor engaged in this, if you look up top, the, uh, the top box is what the leadership set as the goal. So an overall plant yield improvement of 2%. Everything below this was what the team came up with and through a process, and uh, I can mention here, it was through the Covey group of the four disciplines of execution. You may have heard that. Um, but we, we had them come and help our team through learning some better ways to execute and the principles of that uh, in a very deliberate way. Through that process, you can see, and I know it's kind of hard to see some of these numbers, but the team drove this down to very granular things that each of those groups could control in their areas. Some of the numbers don't sound, sound very big. Decreased steel and slag pop from 0.46% to 0.36%. But again, when we're talking about overall yield, those percentage points are worth a lot of money at the end of the day. Uh, but through this process of very deliberately ident identifying high-level goals and then the action items that we're going to take that, and one of the secrets is, is there was weekly accountability to are we doing those things that we said we need to to, to move these numbers. It's hard to read up there, but the melt shops part was 1%. That was their goal to add to the overall goal. And if they were to reach that, that was going to come out to a $5 million to the bottom line improvement 
during a year. So again, small percentage point, big dollars. You know, along with that, on the maintenance side, we have been on a journey at Jewett now, again, since really 2002, to understand more, implement better asset management uh, processes, train our team better. And uh, we've been moving through this journey. Uh, we're probably somewhere around the, the middle to end of that yellow block headed into the green block of where we're at. But we were already doing this, and so what we did is we melded the two teams together in this goal. We just we just kind of brought that together, helped them bring those initiatives together to work on this. And the way that the way that turned into was it's not shown on this chart, but there was another there was another section here for the maintenance and operators guys that was to identify increasing the uptime on the critical equipment as it pertained to yield in the melt shop. And they worked through the same process to do that. Um, there were there were some other things that came out of this. Uh, I mentioned a couple of them earlier, a couple of these I haven't met, but uh, we didn't have, we had a financial metric system and we needed a true process control measuring system. So that required us to make several investments. We had to invest in a, in a level three operating system that brought a lot of the numbers and the information together from disparate systems. Uh, we had to install some scales and uh, integrate those into those systems so that again, this process is going to be sustainable. We didn't want to get the 1% and then in a couple years wake up and find out that we had lost it because we hadn't built sustainability into it. Um, again, IFS was in place, continued to improve that and provided the, the asset management data and visibility to that to help the guys work on it. And then I mentioned uh, we, uh, we engaged Stephen Covey group around the execution training and model that we've used. And the results of that, you can see it was a, it was a tough fault year. Um, this is not exactly the best process control curve you'd like to show, uh, but it is the reality. And the reality is, is that over that 13 month time, I don't have the year before, but the year before unscheduled downtime number was 8.5%. So over the year time, and it was tough fault as you can see, and there were some big hitters here and there that we didn't see, weren't in front of, but over that, the group brought that down to a, a 4%. So they cut it in half in that year's time. And on the yield side, and I, those numbers you can't read, but down here at the beginning where we started to measure at the beginning of the project, uh, the melt shop yield back there was 84.61. And we ended up at 88.65. So a huge, a huge improvement. Anybody see that little jump at the beginning where we made a lot of progress and then it kind of went off? That came merely from the fact of the team focusing on those smaller details. Instead of us setting a goal of let's increase or decrease yield by 2% this year, y'all go out and try real hard. But going down to the granular and the team through the execution model, just by bringing the focus Within just several weeks, there were already, even before some of the tools in the end, the team was able to make that improvement just from that granular focus in the project. And you can see over the year, it had this little bumps in that, but over the year, they made great process. And the good news is, is that with those investments that we made and the team's effort of employing those, we feel like there's no reason that that can't be sustainable. In fact, this year, we'll expect some more improvement. So just to, just to wrap up here, um, you know, it really does, alignment, if, we're, if we talk about that age-old problem, and, and I've seen that and I've been on both sides of it myself, but it, it really begins with the leadership. And our opportunity to engage our team and to close that gap is that process out there and the goals and the, the, the strategic imperatives that we set. Um, the cross-functional teams, we did this in a cross-functional manner. We didn't have the maintenance guys go get in a room and talk about what they were going to do, and the operators go get in a room. Those guys work together. And that, that always breaks down those silos whenever we use that, that tactic. Um, another big one there is, is, you know, initiatives that we tried before, we never got these good of results. And a lot of times as we look back, it was because we had a, maybe a great vision, a great strategy, but we weren't the best at executing. Uh, this time, bringing that into focus and taking deliberate action to help our team execute is the reason that we feel like we got the results that we did. Uh, and along the way, uh, the, the uh, information systems that we have, the, the uh, technology, all that tying together, 
the team wouldn't be able to have that very granular look at how they're doing on a week-to-week -week basis without all that coming together. Today, it is a business necessity for the team to have that information. Okay, so overall, we, we had a really good, a really good project there. Um, we're going to continue that. If you notice, that was a three-year strategy. It's going to turn into a, a rolling three, and uh, we think we're on to something, so we're going to continue. Thank you.